All right, real world problems. So our real world problem is the enrollment at a private school was initially 120 students and has been increasing by 30% each year. Formulate a logarithmic function, T of X, that approximates the number of years, T, it will take before the enrollment reaches X student, okay? So based on the information that they gave us in the beginning, the 120 and the rate, you know, right here, that lets us know that they're giving us information to start off as an exponential model. So we're gonna start off as an exponential model. And the reason why is because we have an initial equation for exponential models, right? We have our, so it's X, right? So in this case, it's X equals our initial amount times one plus our rate to the T. So that's our exponential model. And we have all that information. What was our initial? 120. And our rate, if it's 30%, our R equals 0.30. So we have one plus 0.3 to the T. So our X equals 120 times 1.3 to the T. So that's our exponential model. The exponential model tells us that um, if I know the year, I can predict the enrollment. Does that make sense? Because X depends on T. What they want us to create is where T depends on X. So in order to do that, we need to solve for T. So we're, we're gonna have to solve for T. So they want us to solve for T in order to find a log model. So yesterday we talked about solving exponential functions. If we want to solve an exponential, what do we need to do? What were the steps that we followed to solve for an exponential? Well, huh? We have, how can we make the T into the coefficient? What do we do? So step one, we have our original equation. And then what do we do? So remember how we talked about, we wanna make sure that the exponential is isolated. So what needs to happen for the exponential to be isolated? I'm gonna divide by 120. Okay, so now I have X divided by 120 equals 1.3 to the T. So that's step one. Step two yesterday, we talked about taking the log, the common log of both sides. You all remember us doing that? Taking the common log of both sides. That's so that we can free, quote unquote, the T. So we're gonna take the log of both sides. By taking the log of both sides, I now have log of X over 120 equals T log 1.3. And what would be the last thing to get T by itself? Divide by log 1.3. Okay, so it's kind of frowned upon to have a fraction within a fraction. I can simply turn this fraction, I can expand property number four. So we have T equals log of X minus log of 120 divided by log 1.3. So now we have an equation that allows us to figure out how long it will take for us to have a certain population at our private school. So if they're trying to make future plans, they now have a formula to help them do so. Okay, and our second example, we're gonna apply it. So here we came up with our function and our function is 
P of X equals log X minus log 120 divided by log 1.3. And we want to approximate the number of years required to reach an enrollment of X students at a private school. About how many years will it take for the enrollment to reach 500 students? So I'm looking for, this is my X value. So I'm looking for T of 500. Can I easily solve for that now? I just plug it in. So I have log of 500 minus log of 120 divided by log 1.3. Okay, if I wanna have less to plug in, I can simplify the numerator and I could have log of 500 over 120 over log 1.3. I want to simplify it even more. I can have log of 25.6 over log 1.3, about. But if you're fine writing all of this and not condensing using property number four, then you're good to go. So I'm gonna put it in to find approximately how many years is it gonna take? 5.4 Good job. So it's going to take approximately 5.44, hundredths of a year. So almost five and a half years before the private school has an enrollment of 500 students. Okay. All right. That concludes 7.9. So you should be able to do at least problems one through nine on your 7.9, 7.10 classwork.